Let's go right back to the very beginning. 175 days ago, Sunderland were in perilous plight. Paolo Di Canio kept them up. Mm. At the time, was it the right decision to bring in the Italian? Um, well, it was a decision that, obviously, Ellis Short felt that it needed to be a dramatic change at the football club, an, an inspiring decision that may lift the players. And you can't argue that that did happen, that he kept them up. The performance at Newcastle, the 3-0 victory, um, was a massive plus, and it allowed to develop what happened afterwards. And sometimes I get amazed, Rob, with football clubs, allowing managers to come in and change so much so quickly. I think that should stop. If you look at Stoke and what happened there with Mark Hughes getting the job, he had to play by the rules. This is what we're doing. We're not going to be spending loads of money. Di Canio, 14 players have changed and left the Stadium of Light, and I think they've paid hugely for a guy that's had too many conflicts, Rob, in the dressing room. And that's been clear from day one. Right, five games into the season, one point picked up. At West Brom, it just encapsulated everything that could have gone wrong, went wrong, didn't it? Stefan Sessignon, who was allowed to leave and, and was making his debut, scoring the opening goal. He then made his substitution. Stephen Fletcher picked up the injury. It, it, it was a script that couldn't be made up, really, was it? Well, the Cessignon one was a, a strange one for me because he was one of the guys that inspired Sunderland last year to keep them up. And he was a fool in the Sunderland side all afternoon. And De Canio has to pay the price for that because you made that decision to let him go. OK, he might not have been your choice, but don't be critical. Here he's, look, he's telling the supporters to keep their chin up. Get, He's not in his dressing room lifting his players, telling them to keep their chins up. I thought this was really poor management. And for me, his players are going to be looking at him and going, do you know what? You're out there. It's a pantomime about you. Why are you not in the dressing room with us? I really believe that. He's trying to keep the fans up. who have made the trip, though, from the North East down to the Midlands. He's telling them, keep your chin up. It's, shouldn't he be paying something back to the fans to well, be in support of him? The, the problem is, Rob, He's got his players in the dressing room who have just been stuffed 3-0. And they're down, and they, they've took a lot of stick. He's been, been very critical towards some of his squad in the last few weeks. You know, he's, he's got players like John O'Shea, Wes Brown in his dressing room, who have won titles, who have played under Sir Alex Ferguson, who they had huge respect for. And he thinks that, you know, he can be critical of them. They never experienced that in Man United. And then they've got a manager who's let his feelings be aired outside the dressing room, and they wouldn't respect that. And I think the players have just said, enough's enough. OK, in League One, you might have got away with it. You're not getting away with it here. And the players... I like power, player power to some degree because it tells you a lot about the characters you've got in your dressing room. Their, their hatred of be, being losers. And I think that stemmed from Saturday. They, they would have been a lot of anger and frustration in that dressing room towards Di Canio because of the way he's handled and managed for me in the last... Certainly from the start of the season. He's brought in 14 players over the summer. You, you talked about too much change too soon. The snag with this is, as well, is, OK, they have a director of football who would have identified perhaps some of these targets, but these were players De Canio must have sanctioned. Now you're going to have a new manager in who might not like any of these. On the continent, it works slightly different, doesn't it? Yeah. In, in the big teams, and you've played in France, where the director of football decides it and the coach just coaches. Oh, uh, ab absolutely, Rob. I mean, I experienced with Marseille that, you know, there was a, always a dossier of where we go after this period. You know, when he got the job at Sunderland, if we keep you up, we're prepared to go gradual change. Now, a lot of them players, a lot of people, even in the game, won't know most of these players. Well, no, mo you know, you look at them and think they're not inspiring changes where you... You just can't allow so much to happen so quickly. And I think he totally got that wrong. And you shouldn't be allowed to... Clubs should not act in that manner. There's talk of perhaps a training ground dispute on the Sunday morning. If you read your papers this morning, reports of that in there today. We don't know what exactly went on. You said you like player power. Have you ever got rid of a manager? Um, no. Um, I think we voiced our opinions. I've, I've always believed that the, the really strong dressing rooms, really strong players, individual in your dressing room, will win you things. All the best teams I ever played for, we had dressing rooms that, even if we disagreed, we'd stand up to a manager. We wouldn't undermine him and try and get him the sack, but we would stand up for what we believed in. And I think with someone like Di Canio, he wouldn't be able to handle that. He wouldn't, he wouldn't like players saying, hold it, you've got it wrong. We all get things wrong in life, and managers do. And I think he's got it totally wrong, and I think they just thought, enough's enough.